The blend Altman plot and its analysis is used to compare two measurements of the same variable. In a nutshell, it is a method comparison technique that is suitable for the studies to compare a new piece of measurement or equipment that is typically cheaper, faster, safer, or smaller with the so-called gold standard or reference measurement that may or may not provide the true value. The technique has been developed in a series of papers by Martin Bland and Douglas Altman since their first paper in 1983. Imagine that you want to compare a newly developed method against a gold standard measuring body temperature in degrees Celsius. In this case, when we say compare, we mean to compare their repeatability, which can only be understood by collecting at least one measurement per method on a same subject or sample and do this for many subjects or samples. In that sense, t-test is not appropriate because we're not interested in the overall difference between the two methods. Okay, then how about correlation? Can we assume that two methods agree each other when two methods measuring the same outcome correlates well with each other? So here are the uh, fictitious temperature data using the old and new method. So let's draw a scatter plot and calculate the correlation coefficient using Jamovi. So here are the um, the temperature data, so the first column represents the temperature measurement from the old method, and the second column represents the temperature measurement from the new method. So let's um, make a scatter plot and so the old temperature should go to x-axis and new temperature go to y-axis. And let's just add linear regression line and see what it looks like. Okay, so this is the uh, scatter plot between um, the old and new temperatures, and it looks like it is quite there's a quite strong relationship between the two measurements, right? Um, but before we do that, let's actually run the descriptive statistics to see um, mean and normality check. So old and new. Okay, so the mean measurement is for the old temperature is 36.4 and new temperature the mean is 36.5 so there's a quite small difference 0.1 difference um, and the normality is okay you know, because both variables um, the p-value for Shapiro work test is greater than alpha 0.05 so we know that um, we can run the Pearson's correlation coefficient right and it looks quite strong because you know these dots are actually um, aligned quite closely on this straight line right and see if um, correlation is a statically significant too so to do so we need to run the correlation analysis so We want to have flex significant relations, column fairness interval, and that's it. Move them together. And right, so as we expected, the correlation coefficient is really high. Pearson's R is point almost seven uh, nine eight, right? And this correlation is highly significant. It's less than point oh 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 one. No, oh, 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 one. Yes, 
Um, so it is very significant. So they are highly uh, correlated. As we can see, the R value is very high, meaning that the two measurements are closely related. However, high correlation is not sufficient, even though necessary, to say that the two methods agree each other too for several reasons. First, um, what R measures is the strength of a relation between two variables, not the agreement between them. We will have a perfect agreement only if the points in the figure lie along the uh, what is called identity line or one-to-one -one line shown in red broken line here. In fact, we will have a perfect correlation as long as the points um, lie along any straight line. So, for example, we can have a perfect line like this. So say like this line and all the dots just let's just imagine that they are just all on this line and R, so now the you know p uh, the r should be one right because they're just perfectly correlated right um however are they perfectly agreeing each other um just because they are perfectly correlated no because if you look at the line, um, you know, for the temperatures lower than 36.5 degrees Celsius here, right? So these values, right? Um, you know, the readings from the new methods are always higher than those from the old method, right? So if you look at this one, then it is actually oops, greater than 36 Celsius, degrees Celsius, right? And this one is too. For 35.5, it is actually slightly over 36 degrees Celsius. Um, and this pattern is reversed for the temperatures higher than 36.5 degrees Celsius. Now, where the readings from the new method are always lower than the, uh, the old counterpart, right? And so for here, and so the 37, it is actually not reaching 37. Right, so, I mean, we can see that even though, um, you know, these green dots are perfectly correlated, um, they do not agree each other. And... In addition, as we learned previously, a change in scale of measurement in any or both variables uh, does not would not affect the correlation, but it certainly affects the agreement. Therefore, it is quite possible that a set of measurement pairs produces high correlation with poor agreement. Therefore, correlation analysis is not a good choice of analysis when it comes to comparing two methods. Instead, Bland and Altman in 1983 suggested to use a different type of scatter plot, where x-axis represents the mean of the measurements from each method, and y goes the difference values between the measurements. So let's just calculate those differences and average score and um, do a scatter plot on Jamovi. Now it's easy to um, calculate the uh, columns of difference and the average using Jamovi um, using compute function, right? So the difference, we'll just name it diff. Oops. Difference 
and it is you know, simply the difference between old temperature and new temperature this way we can calculate the difference easily and the average so we need another uh, compute variable so that's average and that's just average between these two so you just add them up and divide this by two that way you just calculate the average column now if we do the scatter plot between these two so difference goes to x-axis um, scatter plot so difference oh no no difference goes to the y-axis then the average goes to the x-axis right so um this is the um basically the blend altman plot and you do not have the regression line on here um in fact, um, as you can see from uh, the slide, the actual blend Altman plot is much more complicated than this. Um, so, um, Jamovi actually has the um, you know specific module um, for the blend Altman analysis. So, uh, let's just use that module to create the uh, blend Altman plot. So, here the module is. So go to Jamovi library, and if you just scroll down, and here is blend Altman method comparison. So you just click install. Voila, so now you can use blend Altman. So click blend Altman and blend Altman analysis. Right, so here, um, so we do not need to calculate the difference and average this time uh, with the blend Altman uh, module. You just move the method one, method two, then it'll calculate um, the, uh, and then it'll generate the, uh, the statistics and the plot for you. So here the, um, the the bias. So we're gonna just uh, go back to the slide to explain what these are. So Blend and Altman stress the need of assessing two aspects of agreement: how well the methods agree on average, and how well the measurements agree for individual. If one method reads lower than the other for half of the subjects but higher than the other for the other subjects, then overall the average discrepancy, um, the difference between measurements on the same subject, uh, may cancel each other out and it will be close to zero, even though the discrepancy for individuals being high. Average agreement um, or the bias so that is uh, the bias so d represents the difference and bar represents the mean so it is actually mean difference bias and it is defined as following so d is just the individual difference so the y location of individual dot and then you just add them all up and then divide it by the number of um, you know samples then you you will have the mean difference which is bias um, so and you can actually do a, a run a one sample t-test uh, to find out uh, if there's any uh, statistically significant bias or not in fact so this um, in a black line here right this represents the line of no difference right it's where the zero is zero difference okay but the mean bias in, in our case is actually 0.1. I think it was a 
107, uh, which is uh, about like a 0.11. So that is the mean bias. So there's kind of a um, bias of um, 0.1 degrees Celsius from no difference. And we'd like to know if this is, is just a kind of random, a random difference or a consistent difference. So, so statistically significant difference. In fact, you know, these two, um, you know, dotted lines, right? And then the blue shaded region around the mean bias, mean, mean difference, that represents the 95% confidence interval of this bias. And then as we can see, uh, this no difference line is not included in this 95% confidence interval of bias, which means that the bias of 0.1 degrees Celsius is actually statistically significant, something that uh, you cannot just ignore, right? Uh, so the plan Altman plot will tell you how much bias uh, the new method has uh, from the old method or the reference method um, statistically. And what that means is that because the bias has a negative sign, so it was a negative 0.01, a 0.1, so that means the new method, new method is consistently um, underestimate the temperature um, compared to the uh, the old method. So here we're back to the um, Jamovi and. Let me show you how to actually run the t-test on this bias. You know if this bias is actually statistical semiconductor or not. So the blend Altman, and if you just go all the way down to blend Altman raw statistics, then it'll show you the menu. So just move method one, method two, then it'll run the t test, the t statistics for you, the one sample t statistics. So t is um, negative 3.2 and the p-value is 0 0.008. So, you know, given the p-value, it is way less than 0 0.05. That means um, the bias, uh, the bias is actually statistically significant. So the, the uh, it actually gives you the decision um, automatically. So it is alternative hypothesis that um, is being supported. So the true bias is not equal to zero, right? So um, that means it has a statistically significant bias, even though we do not know um, you know, if this bias, this much bias, which is this negative 0.107, is practically um, something that should be uh, something that we should uh, be concerned or not. So that is actually domain specific knowledge. Um, so the agreement for individuals um, is summarized in terms of limits of agreement, which involve an examination of the variability of the differences. If the distribution of the differences, so on the y-axis, uh, is reasonably normal, and provided that the level of discrepancy does not depend on the level of the characteristic being measured, then the 95% limits of agreement can be computed as the mean of the differences plus minus plus minus um, at the, uh, the 1.96, so basically two plus minus two standard deviation of that differences. Um, so this 95% limits of agreement quantify the range of values that are expected uh, expected to cover agreement for most of the measurements, therefore guiding the clinician as to whether methods agree enough so that the alternative method can be used in the actual clinical setting. In our example, at least all the differences are within this plus minus two standard deviations range, the limits of agreement, uh, which is a good sign to begin with. Now, the actual range of these two boundaries is half a degree Celsius. 
as we can see from this table, right? So the difference between these two uh, limits of agreement is in fact half a degree Celsius. And the question is whether this range of fluctuation in measurement between the two is acceptable or not, uh, which is to be determined by the expert's experience in the field. Again, it should be noted that how small the limits of agreement should be um, to conclude that methods agree sufficiently is a clinical decision, not a statistical uh, decision. Therefore, no null hypothesis significance testing on the agreement with the plant ultimate analysis um, is provided, and it is not possible to provide a formulaic approach where you can statistically classify agreement into good or poor, or to provide guidance on which method to use when disagreement is considerable because this is quite domain specific and will heavily depend on top on um, the particular purpose and context for which measurements are being developed. The main question to consider is uh, whether the largest likely differences are small enough for the uh, particular purpose for which uh, measurements are used and the decision criteria needs to be set in advance of the analysis um, if at all possible. Oh, and you know, the, uh, the green area uh, represents the 95% confidence interval for the upper limits of agreement and the red um, you know band represents um, the 95% confidence interval for the uh, lower limits of agreement and this alloys so the limits of agreement this is not confidence interval this is just a 95% limits of agreement because these are you know, literally standard deviation, not standard error of the mean. So um, that's pretty much everything about the blend L1 analysis. And for those of you who are interested in finding out more details of the analysis, I hereby include some of the original references. Thanks for listening.